Imagine walking into a single building so immense and ingeniously designed that it encapsulates an entire city within its walls. Skyscrapers, parks, markets, and even waterways all integrated into one colossal structure. Sounds like the plot of a futuristic novel, right? But what if I told you that this could be the urban future of our planet thanks to the mind-blowing concept of arcologies? I first heard about Arcologies thanks to SimCity 2000, a city builder computer game first released in 1993. When my digital city's population was ballooning, I was presented with four distinct Arcology designs that I could place in my city. The term Arcology itself, coined by the revolutionary architect Paolo Soleri in the 1960s, is a fusion of architecture and ecology. And at its core, an arcology is essentially a city within a building, a self-sufficient habitat that blends human-made structures with natural ecosystems in a seamless unity. As urban expansion intensifies around the globe, the need for arcologies becomes more pressing. This is no longer a concept bound to pixels on a screen, it's an urgent call to reimagine our relationship with nature, to build urban havens that are not just massive structures, but also havens of biodiversity and sustainability. I feel like I would be completely satisfied living in an arcology, as long as I can't hear my neighbors. Hearing what people are doing in their personal spaces was the worst part of living in an apartment, and growing that into a city and a building would only amplify the potential for friction. I would also want to have some easy to get to green space, as I feel that's important for me. What would make you interested in living in an arcology? Had you ever heard the term before? Let me know in the comments below. Imagine densely populated cities that don't sprawl horizontally consuming everything in their path, but reach vertically towards the sky. This approach gives vast stretches of land back to nature, offering more room for ecological sanctuaries and farmland. Think of it as urban living that goes up so nature can spread out. Then comes the marvel of self-sustainability. Within the walls of an arcology, you'll find a closed-loop system that makes its own energy, cleans its own water, and even grows its own food. Imagine living in a giant apartment building city that's virtually off-grid, reducing the carbon footprint from transporting resources from miles away. The equation here is simple. Less dependency equals fewer trucks on the road, which lowers emissions, a trifecta of environmental wins. And let's not overlook the potential for enhanced public health. With the integration of green spaces, clean energy, and efficient waste management, the quality of life in arcologies could surpass that of traditional cities. Imagine urban areas where the air is clean, mental well-being is considered a design principle, and your daily walk to work could be through a sky-high forest. Let's look at some real-life examples of this idea being discussed or actually put into practice. First is the Xseed 4000, envisioned way back in 1995. This isn't just another building, it's a conceptual mountain that could house an astounding one million people. And hold your breath for this, the planned height was a jaw-dropping 4,000 meters, or 2.5 miles. That's almost half as tall as Mount Everest. It would have been powered by solar, used a maglev train to travel around, and required building technologies to maintain reasonable air pressure over its massive elevation. Next up, we fly over to Tokyo Bay to marvel at the blueprint of the Shimizu Mega City Pyramid. Featured on Discovery Channel's Extreme Engineering, this project takes the idea of a vertical city and wraps it in an awe-inspiring pyramid structure. We're talking about a space that could accommodate a million people and reach a height of 2,000 meters, or around 6,575 feet. What's groundbreaking here is the planned construction material, carbon nanotubes, which doesn't yet exist in the form needed to build this pyramid. This idea could revolutionize how we tackle the issue of land scarcity by building up into the sky with futuristic materials. The plan was to start building in 2030, but no further action has been taken, and who knows if it'll ever be created. Our third stop is in Abu Dhabi to explore Mastar City, a project that actually launched in 2006 with sustainability at its core. Picture a city that's free of cars, aiming instead for zero carbon and zero waste. Here the streets are navigated by personal rapid transit system, small automated pods that serve as your personal chauffeur. The city was designed to host around 50,000 people and spur the creation of 1,500 businesses. It's a living lab for green technology innovations like wind towers that provide natural cooling for outdoor spaces. And especially poignant is that this model offers Abu Dhabi a sustainable pathway forward as they look towards a future with diminishing oil reserves. 
Dating all the way back to 1882, the concept of a linear city has floated around urban planners' minds. The idea got a facelift in the 1950s with the spatial city concept, but it was Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman who in 2021 declared, let's make it happen. Enter the line, a radical vision of what future cities could look like. Nestled in the sands of Neom, Tubuk province in Saudi Arabia, picture this, a city that is a straight line stretching for an eye-watering 170 kilometers. But wait, it's not just any linear configuration. It's designed to be car-free, street-free, and aims to pretty much eliminate carbon emissions. Imagine the simplicity of life in a city where everything is within a five-minute walk, because the urban space is designed with people, not vehicles, in mind. The line is a cornerstone of the Saudi Vision 2030 project and is expected to generate around 460,000 jobs. We're talking about an injection of an estimated $48 billion into the Saudi economy. But hang on, this is just the tip of the iceberg in a staggering $500 billion Neom project. That's half a trillion dollars in investment to re-envision what a city could be. The line isn't stopping at ground level, it's going subterranean. The design is layered with spaces for pedestrians on top and infrastructure and transportation systems underground. This layered approach allows the project to preserve a remarkable 95% of the nature within its boundaries. Imagine living in a bustling city that's also a nature preserve. The line aims to host about 9 million residents. To put that in perspective, it's almost a third of Saudi Arabia's current population. Not just a city, but a metropolis fueled by renewable energy and smart systems enhanced by artificial intelligence. It's like your city isn't just a place to live, it's your co-pilot in life. Of course, audacity at this level doesn't go without scrutiny. There are questions about its environmental impact, the fate of current residents in the area, and whether the technological and economic underpinnings can deliver on the promise. Yet despite the challenges and critiques, the buzz around the line is electrifying. With construction already underway and the first phase slated to be complete by 2030, it's no longer just an architect's daydream. The first residents could be walking the line as early as 2024. As we mentioned at the start, Paolo Soleri coined Arcology in his 1969 book, Arcology, City in the Image of Man. He envisioned symbiotic cities that would let ecology and architecture exist in a unified dance. Peter Head is another heavyweight in sustainable design, founder of Resilience Brokers and former director of AIRUP. He's been a key figure in the Ecological Sequestration Trust. His work has aimed at using data-driven tools to rethink how we build and manage cities. Head was honored with the Sir Frank Whittle Medal by the Royal Academy of Engineering for his innovations. Sir Norman Foster, an architect who needs no introduction, is a sustainability leader in urban design. His firm, Foster & Partners, designed London's Gherkin and New York's Hearst Tower, both marvels that incorporate environmental features like natural ventilation systems and energy-efficient materials. His ideas have been instrumental in pushing forward the agenda for eco-architecture. If you're looking for more insights into arcologies, check out Isaac Arthur's video currently entitled Arcology Design and City Beautiful's video currently titled Can We Fit Entire Cities in a Single Building, which I'll have linked down below. As we look ahead, the future of Arcologies has great technological and social promise. Here's what to watch out for. Stronger, eco-friendly building materials could redefine our urban landscape. Think materials with the durability of steel, but with a carbon footprint that's virtually non-existent. These could become the foundation for towering, eco-conscious vertical cities. Next, there's the energy revolution. Future skyscrapers could be more than just impressive to look at. They might double as massive solar panels and wind turbines. The energy problems that plague our cities today could be old news replaced by sustainable, off-the-grid solutions. Advancements in agriculture tech like vertical farming, hydroponics, and aeroponics might transform our cities into self-sustaining ecosystems. Imagine picking fresh produce, not from a rural field, but from a farm on the 20th floor of your apartment building. As the urgency around climate change grows, arcologies could become the go-to strategy for sustainable urban planning. Policymakers may turn their attention to greener laws and incentives that encourage eco-friendly development. The public sentiment is hopefully likely to follow, amplifying the call for sustainability. As a result, the concept of arcologies could move from niche discussions into mainstream urban planning dialogue. And if you want to know more about how great it could be to have super local produce, Check out my video on local farming.